uh, learning Chinese and uh, writing and reading uh, poetry, uh, as well as spending time with my family, friends, and empowered young people uh, and women like on this call right now. Uh, so for the past two years, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of the Charleston Girls in Tech Leadership Board. Uh, and I hope to continue planning great events like this one to uh, involve people in the local Charleston area uh, who are interested in computer science, cybersecurity, technology, and any and ev everything related to STEM. Uh, so we today will be having four representatives from four different colleges here in SC. Uh, as we all know, STEM fields are incredibly important and can sometimes be really challenging to break into as a young person. We hope to provide uh, everybody on this call with more information about Charleston Southern, College of Charleston, uh, USC, and Clemson's tech and computer science programs. Uh, if you have any questions at the end of the presentations, please feel free to put them in the chat and we can address them at the end. Uh, again, thank you for everybody here, uh, and I would like to first turn it over to Dr. Sessions, who will be representing the Charleston Southern University. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anna, and thank you for your leadership on uh, Charleston Girls in Tech and getting us all kind of together today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, and I'm going to be pretty brief because I know what you I know that you really want to hear mainly from our students, especially um, from the students that are on this call, because then you'll get to know more about what it is actually like uh, to be a computer science or an engineering major. So at Charleston Southern, we're the one on the call that's actually a, a non-profit, non uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a for-profit school. So we are private in um, Charleston, South Carolina, right up near Somerville. Um, and we do have many programs, even though we're a small school. So if you're at CSU, there's about 3,500 to 4,000 students. So pretty significantly smaller than any of the other schools on, but we do still have a lot of great programs um, and we would love to have all you know we'd love to have you as a student um, so at CSU we have a program in computer science we have cybersecurity engineering and you can do that with a computer science or a computer engineering emphasis we also have a bachelor of arts a bachelor of technology and a master's so what I don't want you to do or what I don't want to happen today is that you see all of these majors and you freak out because there's so much to choose from. Um, because a lot of the majors that all the schools have, um, they start out pretty similarly, maybe that freshman first semester. So you have plenty of time to pick um, and really there's no going wrong, I don't think with any of these. Uh, but to just kind of show you what the differences are, um, in the Bachelor of Science Computer Science, you'll see that you do a lot of programming. So you'll do C++, Java, scripting languages like Python and Perl, JavaScript. Um, we also do a good dive into computer architecture and algorithms. So you really understand what, um, how the computer works and all the kind of theoretical knowledge about what uh, goes into running the computer. Um, then we also have electives and you, know, you can do that in cybersecurity, graphic design, uh, anything that you're really interested in. So in the computer science portion of this, it's like I said, pretty heavy in programming, pretty heavy in the theoretical side of uh, computer science. And then many people lately especially have been um, really wanting to focus on just cybersecurity because um, let's face it, it's super cool. Um, it's exciting field. There's so much out there for this field in terms of jobs and in terms of fun things to do. So in this particular program, you'll see there's a little, there's still a lot of programming because you need to know, especially um, how to interpret code and um, look at it and, and if it's disruptive or look at it in terms of how to lock it down and make it more secure. But then you do a deep dive into things like cyber defense. So hardening your systems, um, principles of cybersecurity, network security, and then and then the, what I think is a really fun part like penetration and hacking. So gonna, getting into that uh, particular field. And sorry, I'm still kind of like going back and forth between the other site trying to let people on. Uh, so I apologize uh, from the chat. Um, we also have, in addition to the cybersecurity, we have uh, a Bachelor of Science in Engineering. And so this 
has a kind of an overview of all the engineering courses. So you would do more like statics and dynamics um, circuit analysis. So you'll see it's a little more uh, on the hardware side of things, how control systems work or how um, embedded systems work. Um, so you can still kind of do some of that stuff in computer science and they overlap really nicely, but the computer engineering part is just a little more um, of a hard a hardware kind of an emphasis and using that hardware to control things. Um, we have three different concentrations in that, and computer being the most popular, and then electrical and mechanical are also an option. So in those, you still learn how to do programming. Obviously, we would need that in computer engineering and computer science, um, networking and architecture. So, so far, all those in the Bachelor of Science field, uh, computer science, cyber, and engineering. So all just kind of different flavors of how, you know, really cool things in computer science and, and with computing. Um, the differences in them are some, you know, they're significant enough, obviously, to have different degrees, um, but at the same time, they're all decently similar. If you compare them to say like English, <laughs> they're all really much, very much alike. So um, again, don't freak out that you might not know exactly which one of those you want. Um, we have a lot of folks who are entering computer science with a really strong like desire to do more in the arts. Um, I know the College of Charleston especially has some great programs in that as well. Um, and our program is a, also a, we have a Bachelor of Arts where you would focus more on graphic design aspects of computer science and a little less on the heavy mathematics and um, architecture and all that. So it's kind of like a a cool way to use your computer science in graphic design, maybe in web design and system analysis. So again, it's still computer science. All these degrees are um, just kind of a different flavor uh, with more uh, arts uh, incorporated into it. Um, finally, this may be your path one day. I'm not sure, right? So who knows what kind of path you'll take from uh, high school on. But um, we also have a Bachelor of Technology, um, and that is for a student who maybe wanted to go to a technical college first. Um, so like here in Charleston, we have some great options for that with Trident Tech. Um, and so they would complete that degree in two years in either computer science or cybersecurity. And then you can transfer that in to our program and then receive a Bachelor of Technology normally in about two years um, in either computer science or cybersecurity. So that's also an option for those of you who are thinking, well, I'm not sure if I want to go to a four-year college right off of the bat. Uh, maybe I want to spend a couple years at a tech school and then move on. Um, so that's certainly an option with us as well. And then finally, we have a Master of Science in Computer Science. So once you're finished with all the undergrad and you think that uh, life at school is over, we say, no, 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 keep going. Um, I'd love to see all of you get a PhD and come join us in teaching because we certainly need that uh, or research. Um, and so it's just more kind of a deeper dive into a lot of the same things. You'll see advanced operating systems or more advanced network penetration, just all kind of more more specific into what you start liking in your undergraduate degree. And we have tons of student things that you can do, clubs, um, cybersecurity and uh, the ACM club. We have competitions. I know before this started, we were all talking about different competitions that we were going to. We have those that are hacking or defensive for cyber or programming. Um, and then you can do all sorts of really cool uh, apps and other things to uh, enter those into programs as well. And um, they have competitions all the time. So it's just a ton of fun to be able to be, you know, with people who are like-minded, just kind of just like here in Girls in Tech. Uh, and so we have that will continue uh, in your career towards college as well. So I do have a student with me today. Her name is Elena, and she is a perfect person to have on this call because she is majoring in pretty much every single one of these, <laughs> which is amazing to me because I picked one in college and was happy to finish that one. But Elena is actually majoring in uh, both computer science and cybersecurity. And if that wasn't enough, she's also um, doing a double minor in computer, uh, no, sorry, uh, criminal justice and mathematics. So um, she's, like I said, she's in all of these fields. Um, she started out in middle school 
uh, doing lots with her with technology classes and also with Khan Academy. So Elena, I know um, they'll have questions for you later, but if you'd like to just tell us, you know, what got you interested and what you're excited about in computer science. Yeah, so um, like you said, my name is Elena. Um, going through it, it's, it's a lot, but it's, it's going to be worth it, I think. Um, what got me interested, like she said, was really, um, I really enjoyed Khan Academy as a child. You know, I was homeschooled, so we did a lot of work on the computer. I really enjoyed like making the circle move by like changing the numbers and the code. And it was just really fascinating to me. Or like in my technology class, you know, we would use the little code blocks to like make the rabbit go around like the block of glass. And um, I also like both two, two uncles on my mom's side, they both are like, they both work in tech. So I've just always had like people to go to that like I could talk about it, especially like as it, my like passion and like my career go goals, like change from like other things into like more of a computer science field. Uh, my one of my uncles works at Microsoft so we got to go visit him when I was like eight and like go see that and like that was like kind of really one of like the big points of my life where I was like hey like that'd be kind of cool to do with my life um it was like just kind of one of those things that got me interested in it and like as I like go through go throughout high school um like just like self-study learning on my own and I took some of my classes later on in high school. I did some dual enrollment just to make sure that it was what I wanted to do without college. And I took some classes. I was like, yeah, I find this really interesting. This is what I want to do like for the rest of my life. It was something that I just thought was really cool, really fascinating that the human is like the human brain is able to like solve these problems and then make a computer solve it for them. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, I know they'll have questions for you later. Um, and I think, Anna, if you want to move on to the next college, I think we could do that. Yes. Uh, so thank you so much, both of you, for that presentation on Charleston Southern. Uh, we will now be hearing from Dr. Stulvey from the College of Charleston. Hey, let's double check. Let's see. I'm going to stop that share for just a second. Let's double check that we've got that. Yeah, great. Um, are y'all seeing my presentation over here on the left? Yes, we can see it. Okay, okay. sorry. Um, there we go. Let's make sure. There we go. All right. Well, so, hey, I am Roxanne Salvi. I am from the College of Charleston, and I am joined by two of my CFC students, two fabulous students, Megan, I want to give a wave, and Emma. So we'll hear from those guys a little bit later. Um, but I just want to say thanks so much for having us. We appreciate the opportunity to tell you a little bit about College of Charleston. Um, instead of hearing from me to start off with, I thought maybe we could start off with you hearing from one of our um, alumni. Sarah Mackey is a graduate of 2016, and she, she um, gives back a lot to our department as far as um, doing different presentations. And, and this is her and some of her other alumni who will tell you a little bit about why they picked College of Charleston, what they've liked about it. Um, Sarah, as you see, is an employee now of American Express. She left CFC and went to American Express as a software engineer for those guys. As a computer science major at the College of Charleston, you learn both theory and applied computer science. You learn communication and teamwork skills, preparing you to become a well-rounded computer scientist. Our tight-knit program means that you work closely with professors on coursework and on research. It's my first coding class. I had no programming experience before, and I was able to go into my professor's office almost every day. I was totally able to understand everything that was happening because I went into him. At the college, you not only learn how to code, but you also learn why things work the way that they do. You learn what's happening underneath it all, which allows you to apply your skills in a broad way. It was like a community for us. Everybody helped each other fit in both socially and academically. Graduates are getting jobs as software engineers, where they work on business apps, virtual world production, game development, cybersecurity, software development, and a variety of other types of applications. You'll be able to engage in a variety of research topics, beginning early in your college career. I ended up being able to do some research with the school my sophomore year, uh, working on a recycling application for the College of Charleston and the City of Charleston in general. Seniors can take an industry. Oh, 
not really sure what happened there, guys. That's weird. Um, I think when that chat popped up that we all heard, let's see if I can scroll it ahead to where we were. Oddly enough. Yeah, about right there. Do some research with the school my sophomore year, uh, working on a recycling application for the College of Charleston and the City of Charleston in general. Seniors can take an industry projects course, helping to solve real world problems for high tech firms in the region, such as Mercedes Benz, Bosch, and MUSC. This capstone course builds bridges with industry and provides tangible opportunities for our students. I had two internships, one was here at Blue Acorn. Both of these came through the department's resume book, and the resume book acts like an open reference letter for, from the department head to potential employers, which recommends the students for employment. Combining the computer science degree with the liberal arts background has meant that it's been pretty easy for me to talk to people both in and out of the tech field. It's also helped open a couple doors for me so far. Studying and living in Charleston has been pretty awesome to get your feet wet in the growing tech scene down here. It's a nice stepping stone to larger markets, but it's also a great place to work long term. College of Charleston's diverse faculty and curriculum definitely helped me become a more well-rounded person, which helps me every day in my job. Employers like hiring our graduates because they are so well-rounded. You will get an education that enables you to remain a lifelong learner. So let me tell you a little bit more about College of Charleston and computer science here at the college. So we are in some ways similar to um, what Valerie was just saying about Charleston Southern University. College of Charleston is a liberal arts college. That means that you get a very well-rounded education while you're here. Um, we are um, a mid-sized, maybe a kind of a small to mid-sized university of about 11,000 students. So chances are you're not gonna see the same people all the time. I chose a liberal arts education as my undergrad education myself because I liked the idea of being really diverse in what I learned. I liked the idea that I would learn a foreign language, that I would learn um, some things about global experiences around the world while still being able to focus um, in my area of study. Um, and that's what we have here at the College of Charleston. We have really this really um, tech degree within a liberal arts education. So it's fantastic. Um, there um, are several different fields where you can study in our department. We have a computer science degree, which is just straight computer science. You do um, computer science theory. A lot of the folks that major in computer science go on to um, master's programs, PhD programs. Um, uh, most of our students do, do, however, go into the real world. They're phenomenal jobs for all of our students majoring in computer science. So that's for really for any of our degrees. Um, another degree program we have is computing the arts. Computing the arts allows you to combine computer science knowledge with an art area. So you can choose an art area of theater, studio art, music, digital media, or game development. Um, just to kind of talk about our two students that we have today, Emma is a computer science major and Megan is a computing in the arts major. So those guys definitely can talk to you more about the details of those. But what's really unique about computing in the arts is it allows you to go very deep into your art area while still going deep into computer science. Um, a lot of the folks graduating with computing arts are doing some really cool user interface development things. They're um, doing research in, in, in that area, kind of a more art focus. We have some game developers leaving our program. Um, lots of folks who are doing um, digital media and marketing for different companies as well. Data science is one of the highest number of credit hours on the College of Charleston campus. And data science, really is like getting a, almost a math degree, almost a computer science degree, and then taking several courses in your area of interest. So if you like data, if you like thinking about how can the fact that it's rained every day this week in Charleston, what can that mean for some other area of study? What does that mean for the biology folks? What does that mean for some area of interest to you? Then um, data science is a great major for you. Um, finally, we have a computer information systems degree. It's a fabulous degree too. 
computer information systems degree is great for somebody who's interested in combining computer science with business. So if you're thinking you're interested in business, but you still want some to, to make yourself distinguish and stand above the rest, computer information systems is a great degree. Computer information systems ha doesn't have quite the same level of math requirements as um, our computer science majors. So that's sometimes attractive to students. Also a computer information systems degree is pretty good for students who are coming from a technical program or who decide late in their sophomore year, oh, you know what? I think I wanna major in computer science. Well, you can do that with computer information systems. It takes a little bit less time to get through the degree. Uh, Things that are great about our department, I just want to focus on a few of them. One is that we have fantastic clubs. We have the Women in Computing Club here on campus where um, we address different, um, it's not just for women, it's actually, um, I was the founding faculty member for the club many years ago, um, and one of our founding members was a man. So it's designed to kind of help um, understand issues that women may face, but also that um, all groups face as they go into computer science. How do we handle diversity issues? We do a lot of outreach programs through um, women in computing. We do some introduction to different um, concepts that maybe we're not learning in class. Um, so it's a great club. We also have um, a data science club, um, which a lot of our data science majors are members of. We also have a cybersecurity club. And uh, just to kind of give those guys a shout out, our cybersecurity club last year headed to national championship um, when they beat 23 other schools in the Southeast um, competition for cybersecurity. So if you're interested in cybersecurity, I think we have a really um, great program here for that as well. And um, we also have the, finally, another club called Software Career and Advancement, um, where, where you think about different things related to your career and how you can um, advance your career. In a lot of these clubs, we hear from presenters who are alumni or folks in, in the Charleston region, so that's exciting. So one of the things I think is really great about our campus, our, our department, our clubs, and how those clubs allow you as a student to become really involved. You have an ownership piece in the club. All of these clubs are student-led clubs, and that makes them really exciting, I think. Another th thing that I think is um, fantastic about our department are small class sizes. Um, we, we try to limit our class sizes to 25, but to tell you the truth, we have right at 500 majors across all of our different degree programs. And so we've gotten up to around 30, 30, or 30 is kind of where we're try, trying to max out. Students is the maximum we put in our classes. I like that because it means that I know my students one-on-one -on -one by name. I know who you are. I, I sometimes know who your dog is. I, I, know, I, I know what you ate for lunch last week because we chatted about it for a minute after class. I like that we really get to know our students here in the department and that's fantastic for our students, but it's really meant a lot to me as a faculty member here for over the past 20 years. Um, I like too that our department will give you a personalized advisor. So when you come to the computer science department, at the College of Charleston, you get assigned an advisor. It's somebody you can go to and talk to. It's not an on the couch, I'm in my office right now, so it's not an on the couch advising session, but it's definitely an, an opportunity for you to get somebody who's gonna listen to you if you're struggling academically, or maybe even if you're start struggling socially or at all, it's somebody who can maybe help connect you with different um, resources around campus. So I like that you get that personalized advisor and I love being an advisor. Um, we also have undergraduate research with travel opportunities, and that's kind of unique for some campuses, I think. We, um, if you are interested in research at our, our college, then as an undergraduate, you can do research, and we'll even pay for you to travel and present your research, um, which is pretty exciting and cool stuff. Um, we, I've known students to travel to Italy. I've taken um, I, I've taken students to local conferences in Tennessee and Georgia in the Southeast. Um, so pretty exciting. 
We have a beautiful location. I don't know if you noticed from um, the presentations you heard from Sarah, but she was actually sitting on the balcony of our, our space. I, as I look to my right here, I'm looking over the Cooper River Bridge. Um, so we have a really, really pretty location. Um, but not only is our, our space outside beautiful, we have a really nice new space inside. Um, a new space that includes a gaming area where students can go and check out different equipment, like for example, our robotic arm or um, participate in vir virtual reality space that we have set up here. Um, or we also have student st our study areas that are, this is a space that's totally designed just for students. So we have some really pretty spaces within our department that are just designed to make your time here at the College of Charleston more special. Um, and then um, we have great career opportunities. You, you talked to, or you heard from a few of our alumni who've gone on to do really wonderful things, but all of our alumni are really having a lot of great success. We have had alumni go to Facebook and Google, all the big names you, you know, but also lots of small startups here in Charleston who are really making a huge difference in the world. Um, and finally, I'd just like to end with, we'd really like for you to join Megan, Emma, and me at the College of Charleston. Um, this, is, this would be your home right up here on the third floor of this building would, would be your home if you were to join us and we'd love to have you. Um, I, before I, I turn over the floor to the next guy, if I haven't used up too much of my time, I'd like for Megan and Emma, who I didn't prep for this question, to tell me some, tell us, tell you something that they love about the College of Charleston and their time in the computer science department. Um, sure. So I think um, some of the things that really stood out to me in the video that you played were the words uh, tight knit and well rounded. Um, and I think you can learn algorithms anywhere, you know, you can learn it online if you want to, um, but you can't get that really um, familial group where you can talk to your professors every single day. Um, you can get opportunities from your peers and your professors, um, department heads all day around the clock. Um, I think that's the most important thing for me at uh, the computer science department, CFC. Thanks, Emma. Yeah, so there are so many ways I feel like I can answer that question there. I just, I love pretty much everything about the computer science department. Um, I think one of the main things that drew me to um, the College of Charleston um, was my major because I'm a very artistic person. I've always loved painting, drawing. Um, and my senior year of high school, I took AP art and AP computer science. And I felt like the computing and the arts major was the best combination of the two things that I love to do. Um, and since I've decided to major in computing and the arts, um, I've been able to work in the AI music and interaction lab um, which is an awesome research experience um, and nothing set in stone, but we may be traveling to Greece eventually. So um, it's just really exciting. And I feel like there's always new opportunities and professors are always reaching out and trying to get you more involved on campus. So it's just great. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. Well, that's it for, it for us, Anna. Great, thank you all for sharing. I really appreciated it. Um, so for our next speaker, we will be hearing from Dr. Tong from USC. Hi everyone. Uh, yes, first I would like to thank, thank you, Anna, to having my here. So it's my great pleasure to share my experience at USC with all of you. And especially um, I'm a, faculty advisor for our Women Computing Club. So I would like to talk a little bit more about our Women Computing Club. So let me share uh, my screen. I have a few slides about the information. Yeah, um, so can everyone see my screen? Okay, great, thanks. 
So I'm associate professor um, and also faculty advisor of women computing uh, at uh, computer science and engineering department at USC. So um, here I would like first uh, give a brief introduction about the, our um, department. So um, yeah, uh, our department formally established it at the uh, like turn of the century. So it's not uh, actually very old. Yeah. So uh, we right now we have a uh, 36 full time faculty um, and instructors, and uh, we actually have right now have more than 1,000 undergraduate students uh, in our department, and we have more than 50 master students, and we have about uh, over 100 uh, PhD students. And our department uh, right now maybe is the largest department at uh, our College of Engineering and Computing. It's about 35% of the students yeah, in the college. And, uh, and we also um, having a rising trend to have more uh, incoming students. So this year, uh, we have over 200 incoming freshmen. So uh, here, just a, a very brief summary about the majors offered at USC. So our department offers three different undergraduate computing majors, and you can find more information from our website. Uh, so uh, the three majors uh, actually uh, share a computing core, um, but uh, differ in their actually uh, called area of study area of focus, and also some math and science requirements. So for computer engineering major, uh, the area of study is electrical engineering. So they, the students, uh, in addition to take our CSE class, um, they have to take uh, classes from the Department of Electrical Engineering. And uh, also, yeah, they will have the focus on the hardware class of software design especially they were focused on like the mobile device and also the like the embedding system and the wearable technology. So we have very, uh, like we have our faculty uh, have the strong expertise in the uh, computer engineering, in the hardware design, uh, in the uh, networking and uh, uh, yeah. So uh, for the math, the requirement for computer engineering lies the general calculus uh, for the engineering and uh, they also need to take like the discrete uh, math and uh, the linear algebra and also statistics. And for a computer information system, uh, uh, we have about uh, right now, we have 20% of students from the for uh, computer engineering and 20% uh, another about 20% for a computer information system. So for a computer information system student, they will have a major of uh, the focus uh, on the business. So they will have the minor in business information management. So that means in addition to take uh, the CSE class, they also need to take classes from management and sometimes uh, also like statistics. So they will focus on the software design and cybersecurity and also the data analytics. And for math, they will focus on, they will uh, lend to the math uh, for the management for business. So they have a different focus area for the math. And uh, the majority of our students uh, coming from computer science. So over 50% of students are computer science major. So for the computer science major, they have various application area. So you can have a different choice. For example, you can focus on the size, you can have the application area for animation, uh, multimedia, um, dance, music, architecture, or something you would like to create. So for that, actually, uh, the students should have, uh, like we will recommend some cluster of the class that you need to take some uh, related class Five, usually 500 level classes from our department. And then you actually have to take three application area classes from other domain. For example, if you would like to take uh, media or animation, you need to take 
the classes for Mart, so from the uh, multimedia. So uh, for that, uh, in addition to uh, learn the technique for coding, for the uh, basic uh, computer uh, uh, like theory, but you also need to learn something in depth for other area. So the area actually is something you are more interested. And uh, the focus for computer science is kind of developing software. And as for the math requirement, uh, it has very similar math requirement as uh, computer engineering. Uh, and so for more information here, so feel free to contact our undergraduate director, Dr. Vidal. Okay, so uh, in addition to the three major for the undergraduates, uh, we also have minors and also specialization. So uh, for our uh, minors, we have three minors. Oh, by the way, we also have the uh, uh, math and the computer science uh, double major. So that is also offered. So for the minor, we have the minor in computer science so that you need to take the basic uh, like the CSE 145, 146, that is for basic programming. And then you also need to take a high level uh, CSE approved class, also some math classes. And we also have minors in applied computing. For that, you actually have a different focus area. Like the one I mentioned for the computer science major, we have the uh, like clusters, and then now you can take it in minors. So for example, you can have different checks instead of like the focus area, we have different checks. So you can have the checks in animation, you can have the check in database, you can have the check in game design. And we do have the minor in data science as well. And so for that, you need to take some required uh, CSE class and also some elective. And for uh, our department has a, a is a national uh, center for cybersecurity, actually. So uh, we have this uh, for undergraduate students, we have the information assurance specialization. And we also have a, a graduate certificate uh, has a focus in cybersecurity as well. So for uh, this uh, specialization, you need to just satisfy those, uh, you take the classes uh, specifically in cybersecurity. So you ha will have that specialization. And uh, for uh, taking the uh, undergraduate program at USC, the first year, uh, the freshman year, we will be uh, getting introduction to programming. And then you also need to take those uh, required liberal arts classes and some basic uh, like science classes, for example, the, uh, for the uh, for those physics, for uh, chemistry. And then when you move to the sophomore year, uh, you will be introduced to more software engineering and the coding stuff. And you also, for the math, you will be uh, taking like a digital uh, logic part, digital math as well. And for uh, the junior year, uh, we will have uh, 300 level classes that has more uh, focused on the axon operating system. And then we will see actually difference starting from the uh, junior year. So for the CS students, you will be more focusing on the programming language. And for the computer engineering students, you were taking more uh, like electrical engineering classes and talk about more like system engineering. And uh, for the last year, uh, the senior year, uh, you were doing some capstone project and with different focus, definitely. And for the capstone project, we have uh, different uh, sponsors from industry and also from academia as well. So the uh, sponsors will uh, provide uh, different uh, capabilities. For example, for hardware, uh, they will uh, provide some specific hardware for you for your capstone project. And uh, we have uh, many uh, options for 500 electives. So for example, the artificial intelligence and uh, USC right now have a artificial AI institution. And uh, 
uh, we have the faculties focus on AIs and we offer uh, various um, classes in AI. And we have the uh, very strong team for bioinformatics and we have the team for game design. And my own research area is in computer vision and machine learning. So especially I try to study uh, human emotions by uh, analyzing the videos and the images uh, like live or captured. So that is my own research area. Yeah, and I also teaching the human computer interaction classes. That is uh, actually uh, most of fun part of the class is uh, the students will build either a, like a website or an app that uh, kind of uh, focus on not uh, just about the programming, but from the human perspective. So make the interface more uh, user friendly. So that is uh, the most fun part as I can observe every year we'll have some very excited project come out. So uh, we have different student organizations. We have the ACM student organizations. Uh, we have Cybersecurity Club, Club, Carolina Gaming Club, and we also have the Women Computing and the Minority in Computing. So um, uh, we have the ad uh, faculty advisor for all those student clubs, and uh, uh, they actually uh, have the very active uh, uh, activities. Uh, so here, because I'm the, okay, yeah. So here, because I'm the advisor for women computing, so I would like to talk a little bit more about our club. So uh, the USC is a braid institution. So braid means braid uh, building, recruiting, and inclusion for diversity. So uh, this is actually uh, the braid institution has, um, I cannot re remember exactly the number, is uh, initiative, uh, Founded by the uh, by NS, NSF, and uh, the purpose is just try to increase women and uh, minorities in computing. And uh, um, so, uh, because we receive this braid funding, so uh, our department is able to sponsor our students to attend the Grace Hopper Celebration Conference every year. So usually, we will send about twenty students. Uh, to attend this uh, conference. So this conference is maybe the largest uh, conference of women computing across the world. So this year is in virtual, this year and the last year because of pandemic uh, is virtual, but uh, before we will uh, have traveled to um, Orlando um, and uh, uh, Houston. So, uh, the students can, uh, can have a like a very unique opportunity to interact with uh, all kinds of the uh, engineering um, working in the computing domain across the world. So it's a huge opportunity to uh, network with the, the people in the world. And they can also have uh, attending those uh, great uh, career uh, fair. Uh, with um, like over, I cannot remember uh, like exactly, but uh, all the names you can uh, call like the big companies, they're uh, just appear in the Grace Hopper because all the, those companies try to actually increase the diversity in their company. So they try to uh, in recruit more women uh, involving in the computing. So that is a very unique and uh, actually also happy event. After the uh, after we finish the conference, we will have a gathering, have a dinner together, uh, so we can have a chat and they will hold a huge party together. So you will have, definitely will have fun there. So, uh, but uh, all these clubs will welcome everyone, not limited to women, definitely. So all gender or majors actually are welcome for the clubs. Okay. And we also have other opportunities like uh, we offer the accelerated bachelor's and master program. So for uh, the students, uh, you uh, most likely in junior year, 
uh, when you about to take the classes for uh, upper level, like 500 level classes, at that point, you have the opportunity to take those graduate level classes so that you can have nine credit hours for a graduate class and use it for both your uh, bachelor degree and a master degree if you apply to USC. So that means you only need maybe just one more year and then you can get both your bachelor degree and the master degree together. And so, uh, and we also offer different research opportunities. Uh, more formally, uh, you can apply for the management scholarships and then with uh, uh, like funding support, uh, uh, 3000 uh, scholarship. So you can work with a, a professor uh, formally and you basically you will write a proposal and you would like to do something you are interested in and you work with a professor and get supervisor directly with a professor and work on something you are interested in. So finally, this is a picture uh, we taken before the pandemic. And uh, uh, so here are our people. Yeah, thank you for your attention. So sorry, I, I didn't bring our students here because USC uh, for this Thursday and Friday are in the fall break. Yeah. All good. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, lastly, our final speaker is from Clemson University, and we are hearing from Dr. Patterson. Let me stop sharing, so I should stop sharing. Awesome. Thank you, Anna. Let me see if I can share my screen here. Oh, a new laptop. So it's asking me to let Zoom share. This will take us just a second and then I should be able to get it. I'll actually uh, take a little bit different approach because um, <laughs> it's actually telling me I need to quit and reopen because it won't be able to record. We'll see if it lets me do this. All right. Um, Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, yes. you're all good. Are the slides up now? All right, good deal. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I'll take a little bit different approach because um, Clemson University has many of the same great things um, that uh, have been presented from the other schools, and all these are great options for everybody to study and, and learn more and get into computing. Um, so main campus Clemson, I'll just sort of say that if you are interested in computing and engineering or some of the other areas like that, it offers a little bit different environment in that it is a um, college town near the mountains. So there are a lot of outdoor activities um, and a, a nice place to go and sort of focus on studies. Or maybe if you live in Charleston already and you wanna get away from your parents and that's the other side of the state, that might be a reason. Um, Otherwise, I'm going to focus a little bit on what we have in Charleston, which is actually pretty new. Um, most of this is graduate program level stuff. Um, so maybe some of Megan and Emma who are on the call, maybe if there's some Charleston Southern students on the call, you guys might be interested in this as well. Um, and anybody who is interested in undergraduate um, we don't really have that here in Charleston, but there's lots up at main campus. Pretty much my slide deck would have been very similar to what was just presented on all the degrees and whatnot. Um, some of these programs do have minors on main campus though, so that might be of interest. But what I'm going to do is focus on um, two things. One, our digital production arts program, because that's a fairly unique aspect of Clemson Graduate School and also what we have here in Charleston. Um, and then mention a little bit about our visual computing division 
at the School of Computing because that's what I'm mostly involved in. So our uh, Digital Production Arts program is a program that's been around for about 20 years now and is a nearly unique program in the country because it's one of only a couple that combine artistic skills and technical skills at the graduate level for digital production. So it ties in actually really nicely with the um, computer and the arts program at, at College of Charleston that Roxanne uh, mentioned. And we've had many of our good students come through uh, CETA and then come to uh, just down the road, basically. Um, we have a building right on the Cooper River as well. Our view is not quite as pretty as Roxanne's, but um, we have a nice view on the river as well. Uh, so um, a little bit about our digital production arts program, we offer an MFA, which is a Master in Fine Arts. And if the this is just sort of a chart of the curriculum, you can see all this on the website. But the gist of it is we combine things like drawing um, and visual narrative and animation with graphics programming and programming. So uh, students get good at both sort of areas. Um, and so I'm going to play like a quick little trailer video thing, if it plays correctly, and then show you a few pictures of stuff that we do and then um, close out. Sorry for the audio jungle, audio watermark there. I realized I grabbed the wrong version um, before we had licensed the music. So that's what that is. Um, but that's a quick glimpse at um, some of the things that we do. Um, this is just another one. Students in the digital production arts program study a wide array of interdisciplinary skills, including art, psychology, performing arts, computer science, and graphics. DPA has a broad curriculum because in order to work in the modern era of animation, visual effects, and games, there is an expectation that people have a broad range of skills. DPA students are exposed to all aspects of production and will leave the program with an understanding of how to work in a team, how to create their own tools and software, and how to express themselves through narrative and visual art. Follow DPA online or contact us for more information. Okay, and so I grabbed just a few quick examples of student projects from some of my classes recently. Um, I do work a lot in um, material rendering and graphics, which is how you get images up on the screen through both the art and science behind that. Um, so these are some student projects from some recent classes just for fun. This is actually just a... Um, class project of a match move visual effects, showing you sort of the behind the scenes of how um, the software uses algorithms to track. And that's actually our building in Charleston um, on the river. And we can layer through and um, position stuff that matches the real world scene, uh, and then kind of go from there to put in elements. And that's the way visual effects shots are done, which is one aspect of the program, along with animation and game development. So this is not a final version of the shot, but it was sort of an um, example for one of the student projects. Um, this is a uh, image from a thesis um, from Kara Fogelsong, who's one of our recent graduates from here in Charleston, who got her MFA, and she's working for the um, special projects team for Epic Games. Uh, she was in Raleigh, North Carolina, and recently moved out to the San Francisco area. And she did her master's thesis on um, <clears throat> games geared at young women. Um, and it was a really neat thesis project. Um, this is another recent thesis project on 
um, modeling for, to match uh, the original 1920s style animation, um, which was an, another recent one. And this is a student who just graduated this summer um, who did a really neat project. She was inspired by this um, Baroque painter, Artemisia uh, Gentileschi, who's one of the um, few female noted Baroque painters um, that made it through the history books, and uh, she recreated the painting in um, Unreal Engine. So this is actually a real-time render on the right that you can move around in uh, and see the perspective of the models and everything. Um, Deanne uh, recently did an AR experience. You can't really see much from this image, but it's recreating Pompeii in the distance. Uh, and originally she was going to travel over there before the pandemic so that you could look out and see the eruption in the distance, but she ended up making it local. So that's just in our building um, overlaid onto the walls of the building. Um, this is a recent one where a student modeled a, an endangered iguana. Um, and a fun tidbit about this, they actually just contacted him last week to ask him to give a presentation in front of the um, International so uh, Society for Iguanas um, because of his thesis, which was pretty fun. Um, this is uh, just a clip from a um, animated production that we made uh, here in Charleston with a team of five or six graduate students. Uh, and it's just a clip. Uh, I don't think the whole thing will play right. This is a project that's sort of in progress. Uh, as part of the graduate curriculum, students work in teams on an animated film or game development much like they would at a professional studio, so they get that experience. Um, also in 2017. One little shot of that. This is um, our building uh, just down the road uh, on what used to be the uh, Naval Base in Charleston. Um, it's an up and coming area. They're building restaurants. Uh, every few weeks we get something new, which is kind of fun. Not quite as much to uh, walk to as downtown, but still some neat stuff. And this is within one of our production rooms. We have a lot of really nice facilities for editing and screening, um, art studios and computer labs all rolled into one. Um, and we have our own professional digital uh, cinema theater where we use it for events. Um, we had Disney uh, Animation do a student summit with us back in December. We have guest speakers. And we also use this room for uh, critiques and screening um, working through our projects on the big screen where we can pick them apart pixel by pixel. Uh, this is a recent, this, this starts to veer a little bit more on the um, technical side, but it's also used for production. We have um, masters in science in digital production arts. So these people get good at the programming and tech, but also take the graphics um, classes uh, for more programming related jobs in the industry, still doing animation and such, but more on the programming side. And those have some really great opportunity for good pay and fun work and living in interesting places. This is what's called a light stage. And we can create light from any environment. Um, it's a project that I led and we just finished building it. Um, we can use this for facial capture. We can use it for studying materials and things like that. Um, we can control the lights by color and, and individually to generate patterns to help with the facial capture or with studying materials. There's an example of a scan. Um, you can probably tell it's my face that we just did the other day as a first test. Um, and what we would do is take this through a process called retopology, where you would get a polygonal mesh, like on the right, that we could use in a game engine or in an animated film. Um, and we can also do uh, population-based models um, for, game or animation, but also for research studies to study how people age or what things change in their face with expressions or health conditions or things like that. Um, and another neat project we're doing in that dome is we're actually studying how feathers reflect light. Um, my PhD student, Jessica Barron, who uh, she actually got awarded a Fulbright. So she's been in Switzerland um, with a research team over there, but we can use the dome to shine lights from every direction and use cameras to measure how they reflect light. So we're creating one of the first computer graphics models for feathers. Um, they exist for hair and skin and are used in the film and game industry all the time, but nobody's done one for feathers yet. So we have um, some active research over at our location too. 
Um, but anyway, if any of that's interesting to you guys at all, definitely reach out. And because we are local, if you're in Charleston, come by and see us sometime just for fun. And we'd, I'd love to uh, show you around and answer any questions um, about our programs, both at main campus or here. So thanks, Anna. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciated your presentation. Every single person on this call uh, is wonderful. So now we are going to hear uh, any lasting words that we have from the students on this call. Uh, so with that, uh, I pass it over to you guys to tell us some individual aspects of your programs. Uh, and if anybody also has questions, we can we can take those now. That would be a great time for that. Um, I actually have a question. So I know um, CSU has like a um, program for high school students to take classes through. I think it's like CSU Scholars or something. Um, do any of like the other colleges? Do y'all have um, any programs to where like high school students can take? Um, classes? I don't know that the College of Charleston has anything formally where high school students take classes, but we do have high school students who take classes with us a lot. Um, matter of fact, in one of those pictures you saw, um, one of our most recent um, students who took programming one with me, I think his junior year of high school. Um, might have been his senior year, but I think it was his junior year of high school. Um, so it's definitely a possibility to take classes here. Um, you, I don't, I don't know that there's a, a formal program in place for it, but we do have lots of students who do it. And um, on that note, if anyone would like to come see the um, computer science department at CFC, I'd be happy to give anyone um, a tour or show you around at all um, at any time. I can leave my email in the chat. Um, if anyone has any questions for me later, um, I'd be lo love to get on a call with you or just answer some questions over email. They do have a great location too. I can second that. I've been there a few times. <laughs> nice setup and building. He's actually presented to my class before. He <laughs> did a great job. Thank you. I think too, um, we didn't talk about scholarships, but there's some awesome um, computer science scholarships at um, the College of Charleston. Um, I know I applied for the, um, I think it was the, um, I can't remember the name right now, but um, if you Is go on leading the- Leading Edge maybe? Yeah, Leading Edge, yeah. And I kind of applied by accident. Like I did not want to do it. My mom kind of like forced me, um, but then I got it. So definitely like, if you're interested in going um, to College of Charleston or really any college, just look into the scholarship opportunities and just apply for stuff because um, there's some really great opportunities. Um, I have a quick question. For schools with game design programs, does that require any supplemental materials other than just the main application to the school? For our undergraduate, um, our minor and some of our classes uh, touch on that and those don't require anything additional. Um, for our graduate programs, we have a portfolio element uh, where people work on both examples of drawing, painting, photography, and uh, programming. Yeah, for our department, uh, we have um, the minor uh, for applying to computer science uh, and you can choose a game design with a selected uh, cluster. And if you are a computer science major, you can have the focus area, the application area in game design as well. And also you can take it uh, just individually, but with a prerequisite class for those game design classes. Uh, Mia, um, CSU doesn't require anything special for um anything in the computer science, we kind of take you wherever you start out in the program. So if you have no programming experience, that's totally fine. And then generally in your progression during some of the programming classes, you would do some um, 
projects in game design and then you could do that for your senior project as well. So there's nothing special to submit. And College of Charleston's answer would be the same. Nothing special to submit, um, just admission to the college. And then you can declare your major once you get here. And we usually do encourage you to go ahead and declare your major, even if you're not sure which major you wanna choose, because if you'll remember one of the things I said that I really like about our department is that you do get a, an in-department advisor. So if you declare and you compare computing in the arts with game development or I think is what you were asking specifically about. Um, and you decide, hey, wait, in fact, I wanted to do computer science, or in fact, I wish I'd do this other thing. It's easy to switch around. Um, so I'd say the earlier do you declare, the better, just because you, you get a local advisor. And not only that, um, you get signed up to email chains. So um, anyone who's giving any information about, and not just for the computer science department, but any um, major that you may sign up for you will start getting all the information and get into that loop and it's just really important that you stay current with all the news yeah um like emma was saying earlier um i'm gonna go ahead and leave my email in the chat as well so if y'all have any questions you want to ask me after this or um you know if you want to stop by, I can also give you a tour. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any more questions on here? Um, so if not, that's totally okay. Uh, I wanted to say thank you so much for everybody on this call for uh, devoting your busy Thursday night to us at the Charleston Girls in tech. Uh, we all really appreciate you. And I know that everyone who is going to watch this recording in the future will too. Uh, we have lots of people who are interested in seeing what uh, these four great institutions have to offer. Uh, and I know that we will have lots of people uh, at my school and at other schools in the area uh, who will be watching this recording in future events and making decisions about uh, future education past middle school and high school. Uh, so again, thank you so much for attending. Uh, we really appreciated hearing from all of your different programs. Uh, and I am so thankful for making these connections. Any last words? Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Anna. Thank you. Thanks. Thank y'all, y'all did a great job. Nice to meet you all. Hi, thanks, thanks for having us. Bye. Thanks for having us. Bye everyone. Bye, take care. Bye. So I'm, I'm sticking around because it looked like all the presenters were, but um, it, we're all gone so i'm leaving you good to see you valerie thanks for asking us to do it thank you so much for doing it all right bye-bye